Okay, hi there, and uh, welcome to a special video looking at some examples of diagrams and some key points about how to get top marks for analysis in your diagrams in microeconomics and macro in 2019. Uh, we use the acronym ACE for diagrams. Uh, ACE is a useful thing, just remember in the exam, write it down when you get into the exam hall, axes, curves and all equilibrium points. Label your diagrams fully and clearly. You also need to remember your ABCs. Make your diagrams accurate. That takes practice. Big, at least a third, probably a half a side of A4 per diagram. And most of all, make them clear. This will make a big difference to your paper. Now, reading the exam reports from different boards over the last uh, few weeks and months, it is clear that examiners are expecting some significant improvements in diagrams this year. That's one of the big weaknesses they saw from last year, and it meant that students weren't getting the best marks for analysis. If you simply draw a diagram from memory and repeat it, but don't try to put it in context uh, to the extract or the question you've got, you won't be getting the higher level analysis marks. To access the higher skill marks at A-level, you need to make a change, adapt, develop your diagram. Perhaps that's involved in shifting one or more curves or perhaps indicating an important area, linking your diagram then back to your written analysis. I'm really clear about this. The really good diagrams make such a difference. They send a message, they send a signal to the examiner about what kind of answer they're going to get. Now, let's work through six examples of diagrams that have been drawn in uh, recent mock exams. This first one, it looks fine. It's uh, as a diagram about the coal industry. And I think the question was about the impact on the demand and supply of coal workers, the labour demand, labour supply in the coal industry, following uh, an increase in renewable energy and the decline of coal. I think the candidate here is trying to show that wages will fall and employment will fall in the coal industry. But this is not a developed diagram. This is just a simple supply and demand two-dimensional diagram. There's no shifts in labour demand or labour supply. There's no attempt to develop that side of things. It's not clear at all why the wage has changed from W1 to W2. We see lots of these diagrams in exams. They are low-level analysis diagrams. This diagram looks a little bit more sophisticated. There was one or two errors. I think the student here is trying to show how a fall in fixed costs draws the average cost down from AC1 to AC2 and increases the profit the firm is making. But uh, there's, some very, there's some confusion here with marginal costs. You need to draw your marginal and your average costs in the right way. Marginal cutting average at the minimum point. A fall in fixed cost, for example, has no effect on um, marginal cost. Perhaps this is a change in variable costs, in which case the marginal cost curve shouldn't be overlapping as they are. It's an untidy diagram. Look at the marginal revenue curve. Very, very untidy. Hand-drawn. No ruler. It's not clear which market or industry this diagram refers to. Contextualise your diagrams as best you can. And uh, overall, legibility is, is pretty poor. Look at quantity on the x-axis there. So a rather scrappy diagram that it could really be improved a lot with some uh, with some care and attention. This looks better. This is a much clearer diagram. This is a diagram on negative externalities from production, and uh, it's well drawn. It's uh, it shows the negative externalities from production, marginal social cost rising, diverging away from marginal private cost. It's a very clear area of social welfare loss, which is useful. It's highlighted and shaded, so that reaches higher levels of analysis. Good use of annotation as well, social optimum, hinting at the market failure there. But it's rather faint. And I think the key, key point here is to practice diagrams with a very, very good pencil or pen so that your diagrams are very clear right from the start. This is an area you can genuinely practice a lot in the days leading up to the paper. A better diagram, a good one, but uh, could be could be clearer. And again, the use of the dotted lines there on the diagram, a bit scrappy. Uh, you know, it's hand drawn. It's it's not particularly accurate in terms of heading towards the uh, the y-axis. They put price on the y-axis instead of benefit and cost. And again, on the axis it says quantity, but quantity of what? You need to contextualise the axis and show which market is being discussed. So halfway through, three more diagrams. This is uh, a nice clear diagram on subsidy. So it's a subsidy diagram. Uh, showing the extent of the subsidy, the vertical distance between the um, supply curves. 
that shows the impact on the price to come the producer receives p3 the price the consumer pays p2 that's okay that's fine the quantities and prices are labeled clearly again it's not contextualized price of what quantity of what contextualize the x and the y axis and i think to improve this diagram you would label or show very clearly the effect on consumer surplus for example so extend that demand curve up to the y-axis so you can show the impact of a subsidy on consumer surplus extend the supply curve to the y-axis so you can show the impact on producer surplus this is a decent diagram but again it could be improved we could with very small steps small incremental improvements we can get to a higher level of analysis keep in mind that the diagrams you produce the diagrams that appear on your exam script have an insane effect on the quality of, of the answer you get and eventually the mark in the grade this is a macro diagram uh, good standard uh, nicely drawn um, should say general price level but we'll forgive the student for that and the, instead of p it should be gpl real gdp correctly labeled on the x-axis and critically they've tried to develop the analysis in this case shifting both demand and long run supply i think this was a question about government spending on infrastructure or successful policies to raise wages and productivity something along those lines either way it's a nice clear diagram showing an outward shift in both aggregate demand labeled and also in long-term aggregate supply a good diagram it's it's a good standard one i've seen much worse than that in the mocks i've been marking and it does the job nicely and the key point i think here is that a good analysis diagram really sets you up for strong analysis and of course once the analysis is good it's easier should be easier to evaluate here's quite a sophisticated diagram this was a diagram about trade liberalization or i think oh no it was a diagram about the uk coming out of um the customs union the economics of common external tariffs if for example the uk has to pay a tariff on goods and services um trying to sell goods and services into an, uh, another country so basically the economics of a customs union uh, and tariff diagrams this student has tried i think relatively unsuccessfully to draw two diagrams side by side it's better to differentiate just make your tariff diagram really clear which producer is it there's been a lot of crossing out here which industry is it who's producing what there's a clear attempt here at to to use analysis showing for example on the right hand side an increase in potential producer surplus here but it's a little bit too sophisticated it does set up good written analysis but it's too close to the text you need to separate the diagram out and give it a lot of space don't wrap text around the diagram please always keep your text above a diagram or below it please don't wrap text around it it makes it very hard for the examiner to focus on the analysis diagram that you've been drawing this i think is too sophisticated it would have been better to have two separate diagrams vertically aligned so it's much clearer which industry is being shown here so keep things nice and simple you'll get to a high level if you do that a couple of examples of what i mean by this this is let's say you get a question on a tax um this could be for example a tax on uh, let's, let's go back here this is a tax on um on uh, a supplier it's really good to draw to the axis so you can show the effect of a tax on for example consumer surplus um this let's say this is a tax on beef farmers i've just made a slight difference to the diagram on this slide price of beef on the y-axis there quantity of beef on the x-axis so you're contextualizing the diagram i would use labeling rather than shading clear labeling consumer surplus for example after the tax for some area a p1b to a p2c it's just easier to write that in an answer uh, the government tax revenue after the tax is p2cfd so label your diagrams make them clear draw to the axes um, contextualize your diagram uh, diagram should be at least yeah i reckon a third or a half a side of a4 always draw to the axes and label and contextualize let's draw something slightly more sophisticated uh, here's a welfare loss classic question you know the economics of monopoly um economics of welfare losses so the profit maximizing output is q1 the monopoly price is p1 the allocatively efficient output will be q2 where price equals marginal cost the deadweight loss of welfare 
if the monopoly overprices and undersupplies is area A, B, C. You know, this kind of diagram, not clearly drawn, half side of A4, it just it just gives the examiner confidence. By the way, the C bit here, let me just make sure that's up exactly clear. The C bit is there. Okay, that's the C bit there. Uh, it gives the examiner real confidence that you're writing and showing good diagrams. A reminder, diagrams should be ACE, axes, curves, equilibrium points. Make your diagrams accurate, big and clear. Don't just draw a diagram from memory. You will get to the basics by doing that, but to get the top marks in analysis in 2019, you need to make a change to your diagram, adapt your diagram. So many students draw what I would call lazy diagrams. They think it's doing a job for them. In fact, it's capping their mark. If you turn your attention to your diagrams in the next few days, you will make a difference to your exam mark. Uh, later on towards the exam, in a few days, I'll take you through some of the key micro diagrams and some of the key macro diagrams for year 13. So that will be in a separate video. For now, thanks for joining in this one on helpful tips, helpful tips for A-star diagrams. Thank you.